Hi, I'm Dr. Nathan Radcliffe from Wild Cornell Medical College, and today we're going to talk about perimetry and its role in assessing glaucoma and its field loss. We'll review retinal nerve fiber layer and optic disc anatomy, common glaucomatous field defects and their anatomical correlates, characteristics of glaucomatous field loss, and we'll touch upon balancing perimetric results from the Humphrey Field Analyzer with structural analysis as well. Here we have an illustration depicting the optic disc, macula, and nerve fibers. Retinal ganglion cell axons follow an arcuate path to the optic nerve. Axons, or nerve fibers, extending from the optic disc towards the temporal retina curve around the macular area. Neurons from the temporal superior and inferior retinal areas do not mix, but generally respect the temporal raphe. Axons also generally maintain a retinotopic organization in the optic disc in the sense that longer axons tend to be situated in the optic disc periphery, while shorter axons from ganglion cells nearer to the optic disc follow a more central course throughout the optic disc. Also note that the axons are systematically layered so that longer ones originating far from the disc are situated deeper in the retina and more peripherally in the optic disc. Now we are ready to move on to common glaucomatous field defects and their anatomical correlates. These types of field defects include arcuate defects or what is called a bajerum scotoma, paracentral scotomas, and nasal steps. Also note that mixtures of defect types often occur in the same field. In arcuate defects, a deep focal notch at the optic disc will lead to loss of retinal nerve fibers in the area corresponding to the notch and, therefore, to an arcuate field defect often connecting to the blind spot. Classically, visual field loss progresses around the point of fixation and ends abruptly at the horizontal meridian corresponding to the temporal raphe, to what is called a germ defect. Here is another classic arcuate defect. Again, this is the left eye and you can see glaucomatous damage from the optic nerve head, or as we call functionally the blind spot, and all the way to the nasal side, stopping again at the horizontal raphe or midline. Let's take a look now at paracentral scotomas. If the notch is partial, that is only involving a portion of the axons in the involved area of the optic disc, it is likely that involved fibers will be of approximately equal length and originate from only a part of the arcuate segment. The resulting visual field defect is called a paracentral scotoma. Paracentral scotomas can occur anywhere in the central field, but they are particularly common nasally. In this visual field test, we can easily see in the pattern deviation that the damage is concentrated in the nasal area. Let's look at an illustration drawn to the approximate pattern of nerve fiber loss that would be expected with the field we just viewed. Damaged fibers project in an arcuate pattern and are of similar length. The corresponding ganglion cells are located in the dark oval area above the temporal raphe. Again, in the visual field test results, you can see the corresponding functional location. Finally, let's review nasal step scotomas. A more widespread involvement of fibers in all parts of the optic disc will seldom be entirely symmetrical, but instead is likely to involve a larger percentage of lost fibers in either the inferior or the superior half of the optic disc. As a result, light sensitivity in the superior hemifield likely will not be the same as in the lower hemifield. This often manifests itself as a difference in threshold sensitivity across the nasal horizontal meridian in the visual field. A nasal step. This particular test is also an example of a field with a mixture of defects. Here in the total deviation plot, you can see an arcuate defect as well. Paracentral and arcuate scotomas and nasal defects are examples of localized field loss, that is, defects that have shape. Here is an example of a normal hill of vision. Generalized visual field loss, in contrast, is a homogeneous loss of sensitivity across the whole visual field, resulting in a depression of the hill of vision without any significant change of its shape. Homogeneous visual field loss in the absence of localized loss is not common in glaucoma, and any case is not specific to this disease. 
Instead, it is much more frequently caused by increasing cataract or meiosis. With automated perimetry, being able to capture and discern between generalized and localized field loss can assist in the prognosis of different types of disease states. Here, the dotted red line shows generalized field depression. This is reflected in the visual field test results in the total deviation plot. Here, with the blue lines, you can see the localized defects in the visual field. This is captured in the pattern deviation plot. With the Humphrey Field Analyzer, the visual field index, or VFI, is always centrally weighted. This is to take into account cataracts and to reduce their effect. Here we have a typical cataract pattern in a 92-year-old woman with ocular hypertension and best corrected visual acuity of 0.3 or 2060. Total deviation values are considerably more negative than pattern deviation values and many more test points are significantly depressed. The GHT classification of general reduction of sensitivity is also typical of cataract. Notice that the VFI is 96% while the mean deviation is significantly depressed. Early glaucomatous field loss may develop very gradually over a period of several years. Local depressions of sensitivity will often come and go for quite some time before finally resolving into stable and repeatable defects. The pattern deviation maps will often expose early functional loss before it is visible in grayscale representations. In this example, the patient has clear indications in their first tests of both cataract and glaucomatous visual field loss. Cataract surgery aids ameliorating the generalized field loss as seen in the total deviation plot, while the localized field loss as seen in the pattern deviation plot remains relatively unchanged. Here is an example of a small, superior, focal, paracentral scotoma in a 34-year-old man with primary open-angle glaucoma. An examination of his optic nerve photograph demonstrates a small, corresponding, inferior neuroretinal rim notch with a thin retinal nerve fiber layer defect. An examination of the serous OCT demonstrates focal and diffuse retinal nerve fiber layer loss with an inferior defect that corresponds to the paracentral scotoma. However, note that there is also a superior retinal nerve fiber layer defect that has not yet made its way onto the visual field test. Let's examine the visual field of a 48-year-old woman with glaucoma. There is an incomplete superior arcuate scotoma on the visual field, which is suggestive but not definitive of glaucoma. An examination of the optic nerve photograph demonstrates an inferior retinal nerve fiber layer defect as well as a small splinter hemorrhage. The optical coherence tomography confirms the diagnosis with an inferior retinal nerve fiber layer defect. Here is the visual field for a 67-year-old woman with primary open-angle glaucoma. Despite an acceptable level of fixation losses, false positives, and false negatives, we see, looking at the gaze, that there are many losses of fixation throughout the test. However, at the pattern deviation plot, we see a classic superior nasal step appearance, which is characteristic of glaucoma. Examining the OCT report, we see a corresponding inferior retinal nerve fiber layer defect that confirms the diagnosis. On the fundus photograph, we see not only an inferior retinal nerve fiber layer defect, but an inferior neuroretinal rim notch, again classic for primary open angle glaucoma. Here is a visual field for a 62-year-old woman with primary open angle glaucoma. On this visual field, there is some lack of reliability due to high fixation losses, and notice on the gray scale that the blind spot is not evident. However, there is a classic superior nasal step on the visual field. Examining the optic nerve, we see 
thin neuroretinal rim tissue inferiorly, and the optical coherence tomography exam reveals focal and diffuse retinal nerve fiber layer loss, which corresponds to the visual field defect. Here's a visual field test for a 68-year-old man with an inferior paracentral scotoma. On this visual field, despite high fixation losses, we see the blind spot on the grayscale and we notice zero sensitivity in the region of the blind spot, indicating that despite the fixation losses, the visual field test may be reliable. Examination of the OCT report reveals superior retinal nerve fiber layer loss that corresponds perfectly to the visual field defect. The fundus photo corresponds with the visual field as well, demonstrating a thin neuroretinal rim and corresponding retinal nerve fiber layer loss superiorly. This Humphrey visual field demonstrates two separate visual field defects. The first is a broad inferior arcuate or germ scotoma. The second is a smaller, deep paracentral scotoma next to fixation. An examination of the serous OCT demonstrates two superior retinal nerve fiber layer defects, each of which corresponds to the visual field defects. The optic nerve photograph demonstrates superior neuroretinal rim loss and two distinct retinal nerve fiber layer defects, again corresponding to the visual field loss. This visual field demonstrates several classic glaucomatous visual field defects all in the same eye. To begin with, superiorly we see a small paracentral scotoma which is indeed an arcuate scotoma coming back to the blind spot. Inferiorly, there is a broad inferior arcuate scotoma, and superiorly, we also see a small nasal step. On examination of the serous OCT, we see both inferior and superior retinal nerve fiber layer defects, which are both focal and diffuse, and which correspond to the visual field loss. As discussed earlier, generalized depression typically occurs from cataract and not glaucoma. In this example, however, we see a generalized depression to the visual field, which is the result of significant superior and inferior arcuate scotomas. There are approximately 20 decibels of visual field loss in this case. An examination of the serous OCT here with guided progression analysis demonstrates that this patient has progressed significantly from baseline and that there is significant retinal nerve fiber layer loss superiorly and inferiorly. The optic nerve photograph demonstrates pallor and cupping characteristic of glaucomatous optic neuropathy. This concludes the presentation on detecting glaucomatous visual field loss with the Humphrey Analyzer. I'm Dr. Nathan Radcliffe, and thank you.